Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the studio this evening. So, tonight, as you can see, I am continuing my love affair with those things that I remember about summer from my youth. I've got a rocket pop, I've got a fudgesicle, and I've got an ice cream sandwich. Delicious. Okay, in this painting, today I'm using my m -gram paints, which you can see in the paint cam there. I am also using my Da Vinci 418 Squirrel Mop brushes. And the paper that I'm using is Daler Rowney 140 pound watercolor paper. This paper is a wood pulp paper, it's not cotton paper. So uh, all of the colors will run just a little bit more. Something we need to keep in mind as we paint, uh, but we'll be able to handle it. It will be uh, no big deal for us. There we go. So I'm using a little bit of pyrrole red here at the top of this bomb pop. And uh, in addition to painting in what are the grooves and uh, high points of I guess the fins of this rocket in the uh, rocket pop. Um, I'm also kind of trying to remember uh, how the colors run together a little bit. If you remember that, it's kind of a funny thing. There's a distinct red section, there's a distinct white section, and there's its own blue section. And somehow, just in little bits and pieces, little areas, those colors all run together, however that happens, I don't know. It never really mattered to me, to tell you the truth, because they were all delicious. Oh, but no mind, here we are painting our red, white, and blue rocket bomb pop. I did a, one of these just a solo uh, earlier this summer, and it was so much fun that I thought I should bring it back here. Uh, and do uh, another one as one of the three that I like here. All right, I'm moving on to the ice cream sandwich. And there we go, there, that's better. Move it right into the middle. So I'm using a little bit of sepia and a little bit of burnt umber in this. And um, if I'm being honest, by the time I'm done with this, I'm a little disappointed in it. For whatever reason, the burnt umber uh, never really uh, bled into the paper, not bled into the paper, soaked into the paper. It always seemed to sit on the sizing of this paper. And so when I go back uh, to do a second layer of paint on this, when I'm when I when this layer dries. It seems to run and uh, and grab and smudge and uh, well you'll see it later and you'll see how I try to handle it but uh, I was a little disappointed and I don't know if that is the paper or if that is the uh, the paint I have to believe it's the the paper. Because I've used this paint for years and years and I've never had a problem with it. So the third thing I'm painting here, and I'm just trying to leave a little bit of white, stark white up at the top uh, for a reflection. The third thing is, of course, the fudge sickle, or as I call it, the fudgicle. All uh, so delicious. All I, can't, I haven't had a fudgicle in a years. And after painting this, I can't tell you how much I want to run out and get one. So I'm doing a little bit of mixing of colors here. What I don't want to happen is for my fudgicle, or my fudge sickle, to be exactly the same color as the cookie uh, portion of the ice cream sandwich. And so I'm mixing in a little bit of azo orange and a little bit of azo yellow. I'm, I'm sorry, azo orange and uh, yellow ochre into this to just make it a little bit different. And uh, the, the cookie portion, the cracker portion of 
this ice cream sandwich is all burnt umber and sepia. And since I painted the top of this one, I've got to paint the bottom of this one also. And with any luck, by the time I get done with this, then my bomb pop will be dry. I'll be able to go and put on the next layer of color on that if I've timed this all properly. There we go. There's the cookie portion of that completed. Uh, now, I'm just going to mix a little, oh, this is what I'm doing, I'm mixing a little bit of color, I want this to be really pale, really, really pale, because I don't want the ice cream to be stark, stark white, I want it to be different than the surrounding background, which is stark white, so I'm mixing just a little bit of color, I believe I did a little bit of neutral tints and a bit of yellow ochre, if I'm not mistaken, to make this really really fine uh, gray and I'm just putting it on there there it is so you can see uh, that it's a very light color when it dries it's gonna be even lighter you almost won't be able to tell but it's gonna be just enough so uh, that it's gonna stand apart from the background and I'm just I'm continuing to add a little bit of water this is just straight water onto it now to dilute it even more I just want just the tiniest bit of color. Okay, and now I'm going to mix a little bit of permanent alizarin crimson, a little bit of maroon perylene. It's not quite dry. And down here we've got a little bit of turquoise to add some colors into the valleys. The fins on this rocket pop are fine take a little color off of those but they're fine but the valleys in here really need to be a bit a lot darker there we go a lot darker they're way in shadow those fins go way deep in there all right there's the first one now I've got to decide where's that channel on the second one gotta be right about there let's just draw it in nice and dark clean our brush and blend it out let that flow out a little bit that's going to kind of make that channel for us the the paint will decide where it needs to go yes i know i've taken quite a lot of it off but you know what the good thing is boom i can just put it right back on there we go we've we've just defined that fin and like i said before that color runs up into that white. I don't even know what flavor that white is, but it runs right up into that white. So I'm gonna paint a little bit into that white. Not nearly as dark as, as it is in the bottom though. And there's our next fin. We've just made all of our fins right there. And I blended it out on the top side. I'm gonna blend it out on the bottom side. The thing is already starting to look great on the bottom. I'm just going to dab and put a little bit of that blue where it ran up this. There we go. I don't know if that's going to make it look any more realistic or anything. I'm not trying for super realistic looking, but that's kind of the way it is. And that's definitely the way I remember it. There's not a stark break in one if you got a perfect one that would be unbelievable to get a perfect one that had uh, the colors in three distinct colors but uh, we mostly didn't all right here we go this is a burnt umber a lot of burnt umber in here and I'm just trying to what I'm really trying to do is just strengthen the color of this uh, cookie crust cookie <laughs> Whatever you call this, uh, it's not a cookie, it's a cake topping. It's thin, but whatever it is. Uh, so this is a little bit of sepia, a little bit of yellow ochre, and a lot of burnt umber in here to make uh, the second coat of this cookie outside. I don't know, that delicious cakey, cookie, 
cracker kind of thing. That looks a lot better. I like that. Looks a lot better. And then the fudgicle is a lot darker than that first coat uh, would lend to believe. So I'm going to put in the grooves in the side of this. There we go. Maybe if I get my act together, I'll slide that over <laughs> to the left and you can see exactly what I'm doing. Come on, Michael, slide that over. There we go. Now we can see. Uh, and there's a little bit of a shadow on the very outside of these. I'm going to make this nice look nice and round. So there's got to be a bend to that outside where you see it go around. Just going to add that, and I'm not really even going to blend that in much. I'm just going to let that be uh, as it is. But I am going to blend these stripes a little bit. And here we go. It's a more problem I'm having with this burnt umber. I'm not enjoying that. You can see it's just coming straight off of there and taking the first layer with it. Excuse the uh, view of my hair. <laughs> That's probably not what anybody wants to see. Um, uh, given that uh, that came off the way it did, uh, I think I'm just going to add a whole second layer to this and we'll darken the entire thing next time around and uh, give it a go then and after looking at it the, the whole fudge sickle needed to be a bit darker anyways so I think this is I think this is a better approach two layers of paint on top of it and then we'll start darkening those areas where those big stripes are the big indentations in the side of uh, this fudge sickle, I guess they give it some support uh, as you're eating it. I don't know. But my red is dry enough now. I can come in and do the same thing I did with the blue section of this bomb pop. Is just put in uh, some uh, uh, deep shadows in the fins or in the the low points of this uh, bomb pop. Uh, I can't, <laughs> I, I giggle every time I look at this. I, I can't believe uh, how much I enjoyed painting this bomb pop. And, uh, and the one I did by itself too, <clears throat> they're just, uh, there's something that are always gonna remind me of summer uh, probably until the day I die, uh, hopefully that's not for a long time, um, but it's one of those things, and I, and I, I kind of feel a little sad I don't see them anymore, but man, they were so cool. Um, I hope they're still around, and I'm just out of the loop of seeing where they're at, but I'm just tickled by this. I'm, uh, I'm definitely going to have to hang this in my office so I can look at it every day. And uh, here we go, the trough in between the fins on the top of this one. There we go. And I should say, I really, uh, I, I thought I did a really good job on the first one of these that I did, the first bomb pop that I painted. And when I got to this one, I went, man, I really feel like I learned a lot painting that first one. And I think this one turned out fantastic uh, when we get to the end on what this one looks like. Even better than that first one that I did. And I love that first one. But I, this tells you how much more I like this one. I feel like I've gotten the fins a lot better on this one. The shape of the fins. How they fit in with the rest of the bomb pop. I think it just works a lot better on this one. Here we go, and I'm just blending that out to, to see if I can get that exactly the way I want it to look 
where I think it needs a little less paint, I'm going to dab it off. There we go. Then dab it off. And where it needs a little more paint, I'm just going to put a little bit more paint on there. And that definitely looks like it's got a couple of fins. And of course, that red's going to drip down into the white, just like the blue does. Just like they all do when we look at them. And there it is. And that's going to end up drying and being a lot lighter, but uh, I think it adds a lot to the painting. There we go. Just like that. Look at that. All right. Right on down there. And, and I should say I'm putting it on... The sides, I'm trying not to put it on the top of that fin so much, just so that you can really see where the fins are at. It's kind of a, it is kind of a cheat. There probably is a lot of that uh, color all over those fins and valleys, but I will leave that for later. Okay, so I need to add some dimension, some thickness uh, to the cake part, the, the solid part. I'm still not sure what to call it on here. It's not a cookie ice cream sandwich. Uh, so I, I'm putting a, a, a bead, a really dark bead right down the edge of that where, where there should be a little bit of a shadow. Uh, and that's going to add quite a bit of thickness to it. Well, not quite a bit, but a bit of thickness is going to take it from 2D to 3D, I guess is the best way to say that. And there we go. Just doing the same thing on the bottom too, just to make it look as though it's not an infinitely thin slice of something brown on the top of that. That it's a cookie outside holding that delicious ice cream in on the inside. And you can see now that that ice cream has a little bit of color to it. And if you look at it, it looks a little gray, a little bit whatever. But if you just look at the, if the ice cream sandwich as a whole... You look at it and you can see that that ice cream is different. It's there. It's not blending in with the background. And that's exactly what we want. We want to know when you look at it in, in passing that there's definitely some, uh, that there's some ice cream there. All right, now the base of this Rocket Pop is, of course, in shadow. I'm going to put a, quite a bit of turquoise on here. I should say when I did some color swatches to find out what colors I needed to use for this, I was totally shocked that uh, turquoise was the color that I needed. I never would have thought that turquoise was the color of the Bomb Pops that I'd been eating in my youth. Or at least M. Graham's turquoise. It may not be everybody's turquoise, but, uh, but sure enough... <laughs> That's the color that it was, or pretty close to that, anyways. Okay, and uh, now uh, what I need to work on is I'm getting some more sepia, and I've got a lot of holes here in the top of this ice cream sandwich and I drew a number of them on and now is the time when I figure out if I can see through the paint where they actually go and uh, your guess is as good as mine I know there's three rows on the outside and two rows on the inside And I'm just trying to draw little circles. Yep, there's my hair. That's it. 
I'm sorry about that. I didn't mean to get my hair in the picture. One, two, one, two, one. There's another one. There's another one. Well, I've gotten close. They're not all great circles. Uh, but they're there. If I'm being honest, this is where I wish I had done a couple of them and uh, kind of called it good instead of trying to be so literal with these uh, and putting all of those dots on there. I think I lost a little bit by putting all of them on there. I think I would have been better off by putting one or two and letting everybody's imagination uh, go and uh, placing all of their own in there. But uh, no doubt we'll return to those in a little bit. I've got to do some more work on my Rocket Pop. So I'm extending that uh, channel between the fins on my Rocket Pop just a little bit. I am darkening that channel, but what, in essence what I'm doing is I'm extending uh, the darkened area a little bit and uh, that's going to help to build up the sides of that really it's just going to add a little bit of extra shape to it and there's more of that bleed over into whatever that white flavor is I'm assuming it was vanilla could have been just ice I don't know <laughs> but it was delicious anyways um, and the same thing on the red. It bled down when they poured the three different colors in there somehow. Uh, and I'm going to do the same thing on the red. I just want to redo and make sure I've got those fins standing out exactly the way I want them to on here. And the way I'm doing it is, again, darkening those channels that little bit more and blending that color out to the tops of those fins. Boy, that does look good. That looks good enough to eat right now. You could just take a bite out of that. Oh, so delicious. Okay, trying to get a little bit of white here on the top side of all of these small holes on the top of this cookie crust are little highlights right on the highlight side there's white on the low light side there's dark and that should give it a 3d look but again I I really kind of wish I'd have put three or four or five maybe six really spectacular holds on there and just kind of held off on the rest. Uh, and now I'm moving back over to my fudge sickle. And again, I'm, I'm a little subconscious that uh, my colors aren't going to hold on here quite as well as I want, that they're going to run and pull the bottom layer off. So I'm going to be a little extra careful on here and not do too much. Uh, I I think probably I will leave these colors the way they are, a little bit darker in there. They'll be a little more stark of a shadow, but I'm just going to have to live with that on this fudge sickle. And I think I'm okay with it because it's so dark um, and chocolatey and delicious that I don't have to worry about it too, too much. Uh, but uh, what I do need to worry about are some whoops well, I was gonna say some some sticks out of the bomb pop and the fudge sickle but apparently I need to worry about a highlight on the uh, bomb pop <clears throat> okay let's see what we're gonna do here we're coming down to the end on this one uh, and I looked at the reference photo and for some reason, this top corner has a bit more of a shadow on it than everything else. I'm trying to put that on. 
and I think it really would help to uh, give this a lot more dimension but you can see as I go back and touch it um, as I go back and touch the uh, the brown on this and I'm assuming it's the burnt umber but as soon as I get it wet it, it pulls all of the underlying layers right off of there and um, it's a bit frustrating I don't know what to do about that and now I'm going back and trying to make all of these holes on here a little bit better. And I, at this point, I think what I'm doing with uh, this ice cream sandwich is called fidgeting. And I probably shouldn't be doing this. I sh probably should have left uh, the ice cream sandwich the way it was. You see there, there's my hands. I give up. I'm going to leave it the way it is. I'm afraid that I'm going to ruin it by doing more to it. Uh, but I do have a few popsicle sticks. And if I'm painting popsicle sticks, that means I'm coming close to the end. I've got only a few minutes uh, left on this one. So since I've got a few minutes left, I will say if you like this video, please give a like to it and subscribe to my channel. <clears throat> I've uh, I do post new videos every week. I do a live video every Saturday at 8 p.m. Pacific. I've got a website called watercolorswithmichael.com. I've got a lot of stuff there. I'm uh, continually putting up new information. Got a great gallery of all of my work that you can see, or not all of my work, I'm sorry, but a lot of my work that you can see. I've got links there to uh, reviews that I've done. I've got uh, links to uh, Amazon with all of the products that I use if you like these and might want them for yourself. Uh, what else do we have there? I have links to uh, my uh, coffee fund or to the beer fund if you would like to contribute to help keep uh, me going and producing great quality videos like this. All right, I'm doing a little drop shadow here. And I don't have it drawn in, but I think I can do it anyways. I'm using mostly neutral tint here, which is a middle gray slightly to the purple side of things. And I'm just going to draw that on there. It's mixed very lightly. I'm going to draw that on ever so slightly. So that we have a nice shadow coming off of everything that we have just painted. I have links on my website to Instagram and uh, Twitter. If you do either of those, I do post several times a week to both of those. I've got links on my website to my Etsy store where I uh, have a lot of my paintings for sale. You can get those if you so desire. And um, I think that's about it for the website and social media things I have going on. I do have a blog on my website where I do talk about the things I have going on and uh, the things that are upcoming in my art life, if you do have an interest in that. I'm going to have some uh, specials coming up on my website, so you may want to tune in to check out see what those are. Uh, if you're an early adopter... Uh, if you're watching this uh, much later, you might miss that, but hopefully you'll catch it early on and go and see that. And uh, with that, I think we're coming to an end. We've got, well, I've got a minute to go, a minute or so to go. Oh, I'm going to just put a little edge on both of these popsicle sticks just it's really just sepia right down the edge of those to give it just a bit of dimension. There it goes. 
I don't know what I have left here. Can't be too much. Oh, I'm going to do a quick highlight. And I've got my pen. This is a Sino Uniball pen. It's a white ink. If you want to do some quick, easy highlights on your watercolor painting, they don't quite look like watercolor, but they are quick and they are white. They're very white. Uh, you can use the Sino pen for that. It's a fantastic for it. And there we go. A couple lines and dots here and there glistening off of the <clears throat> ice or iciness that is that rocket pop. There it is. Boy, that does look delicious. A couple right on the edges there. On a few on the fudge sickle. Really bring it to life, make it pop out of there. You don't need much, just one or two marks here and there. I think that looks fantastic. All right, there it is. Thank you so much for watching my little trip through things uh, remembered in summer.